It is time now for our latest Bloomberg West series, Bioengineering the Senses, a closer look at the technology driving forward the frontiers of medical science. Today, we meet Ava, a little girl who's learning how to hear thanks to a brainstem implant that the FDA has just approved for children. Take a look. Did you hear it? I heard it. Mm -hmm. It took five and a half years before she heard her first sound. <laughs> Hearing aids, ear implants, and finally an experimental brain surgery. Here it is. But now with 21 tiny electrodes bypassing her ear and auditory nerve, Ava. Ava is starting to recognize sounds and even make a few herself. Four hospitals in the U.S. have FDA approval to perform auditory brainstem implants on children under the age of 12. The operation is tricky. We make a, a small opening uh, back behind the ear and um, we go over the cerebellum. There's a little area called the foramen of Lushka. It's where the spinal fluid goes from inside the spinal cord to outside the spinal cord. It's a natural opening. And fortuitously, I guess, the cochlear nucleus lies right along one side of that. And we place a paddle uh, uh, with 21 contacts adjacent to that cochlear nucleus. Inside the operating room, a team of doctors has to make sure the tiny paddle is placed in exactly the right spot. The area that we're putting the, the auditory brainstem implant is very neurologically congested. In other words, a lot of cranial nerves in a very close proximity. And you don't want to stimulate a nerve that shouldn't be stimulated. The ABIs are manufactured by metal and cochlear. NYU doctors estimate the first year of treatment could cost about $150,000. Good girl. The goal, to activate as many of the 21 electrodes as possible. The first time she actually heard our voices, she turned and looked to my husband and was in total shock. Then after we got home and she heard the dog bark, she stepped back and she looked at the dog. It was just the greatest response to see. Right now, ABIs are a last resort technology, something to try after more traditional options like a cochlear implant have failed. Until now, the devices have been used for adults who lost their ability to hear when they had brain tumors removed. Performing ABIs on children is still in the trial phase, and it's not clear how effective ABIs will be in the long run. We can't say to a patient, does this sound like a high pitch or a low pitch? Certainly if it's a child, we can't do that. But for the patients and their families, even a little progress is a lot to cheer about. <laughs>